Good morning, true crime fans. No sooner than I start talking, they start talking. Dogs. <clears throat> Look, we have a lot to cover this morning, but you know I have a little baby frog living in my throat. Hang on. I have hot tea. I mean, you know I've already had coffee, right? I had 22 delicious ounces of gossip, rumor, and innuendo coffee. Oh, there's still some in there. I didn't realize there's a couple swallows left in my coffee. But then I got myself 32 ounces of uh, <clears throat> lemon and ginger tea. And it's sweetened with some hot honey. Oh, I love the hot honey. Do you like hot honey? Anyway, it's like honey with chili powder. Hi, hi. Stop. These dogs. Okay, look. There's a lot happening this morning, and I got to get to the post office. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who came out and was like, I want an emotional support chicken, and who also followed all the rules. Because some of y'all were like, uh-huh, please send me one, and did not follow all the rules. You didn't give me your address, you didn't use your code word. It was a situation. <clears throat> Stop it. But of the many, many people who made requests, um, the top, the first 10 people in are getting emotional support chickens. They are being mailed today. Today is Friday, December the 22nd. They will not arrive before Christmas unless you live like right next door. If you live in Bergen County, then you might get it before Christmas. I don't think any of the people lived in Bergen County. Shout out to everybody in New Jersey. But um lots of new people far and wide. There is a new giveaway in the works coming soon it has been it might have been debuted earlier this morning to a certain group of people y'all know who you are Shh, you know you're not supposed to talk about it anyway i don't even have all the supplies i need yet but um oh wait there's another secret plan that i haven't debuted to anybody i just remembered that i made some yesterday <clears throat> maybe those will be a special prize anyway so look this is what's happening in Adelson News. You know we love us some Adelson News. I have to write down 216 because I my time codes. In Adelson News, word on these true crime streets is that Wendy Adelson, the sister of Charlie Adelson, daughter of Donna Adelson, um, will be indicted. Now look, that's the rumor. That's the gossip. That is what they're saying out here in these streets. And when she's indicted, there's an excellent chance, of course, that she will be arrested yo this is scandalous news as far as i'm concerned and because you know it is miss wendy who is out here like the state is not going to decide to arrest me they're not going to decide to arrest me but we know from her ex-boyfriend jeff lacasse that um she is a narcissistic sociopath so enjoy prison that way she and her mama can spend some alone time some together time for the rest of their life but what happens to the kids Here's the thing, even though Wendy gets arrested, if she gets arrested, and they're saying possibly before the end of the year, that's like within the next week or so, y'all. Look, I do not care if it is Christmas morning. I will be doing a live breaking update. Like, yo, the hell I got arrested wherever I am. Y'all remember when I was on a cruise ship floating in the ocean in, in the Caribbean, I was like, we are here on the Lido deck and I have to report breathlessly that Donna Adelson has been arrested. Oh, I was beside myself. My Wi-Fi was spotty, but I was like, mm -mm, the people need to know this information. And so I got the people the information. If Wendy gets arrested, oh my God. You know, these people are going to be convicted, right? They all going to be convicted because Tallahassee and crime and plotting on a murder. Anyway, so here's the thing. What happens to those kids? What happens to Ben and Lincoln when she gets arrested? Even when your mom is arrested, your mother still has some say as to where you get to go live. Turns out that's how that works. But only limited say. Um, blood family members have rights. And if all your grandparents and everybody are arrested, who do these kids go to? That would be the Markells. Look, I heard word on the street is that Ruth Markell, the grandma who has been out here fighting for grandparents' rights, finally got to have a visit over the weekend 
with her grandchildren. Oh my gosh, I almost need an emotional support chicken to dab my little tears. It was so sweet. Oh my goodness, she finally got to see her grandkids after many, many long years. Now listen, you know Wendy is nervous as anything and her lawyers are probably like, Heffa, we know you don't like this lady, but things are looking grim for you. Grim, grim, grim. And so, um, hang on. <clears throat> I don't even have to talk my throat dry. My throat is just dry this morning. But, um, you know, she's like, mm, once uh, I go to my forever home, these kids might want to know these grandparents. I don't know what Wendy's sort of calculation and math is with this. But what I've been hearing is that the Markel grandfather has a home in California that's like a wonderland for kids. Oh, there's a pool. There's all this fancy kid stuff, whatever, whatever. So if need be, those Adelson children could go live with the Markel grandparents. You think maybe they'll change the name back to Markel? Unclear, but child, that whole situation is a mess. And then I got some additional information that I found very fascinating. Now listen, we've been listening to the jail phone calls and one of the things that Charlie and the whole family was saying was, Charlie was doing so well. Charlie was doing so great in trial. Dan was like, no, Mr. and Mrs. Adelson, don't drive up to Tallahassee because I want to be the one to drive Charlie home. Hmm? Did y'all not see the case? Were y'all not watching the same case I was watching? Because I, mm -mm. And clearly they were suffering for some confirmation bias because even after Charlie's direct examination, some people were like, oh, okay, I see that. But the rest of the world was like, boy, you a lying sack of sugar. But, um, <clears throat> oh my goodness. Can your throat fall off? I think my throat might fall off. Child, this is my money maker. I can't be having my throat fall off. Anyway, um, Daniel Rashbaum was like, you're doing great on, you know, if I had to give you an A, I, I, if I had to give you a grade, I would give you an A minus. You did so terrific. While the rest of us were like, oh, he looks like an arrogant liar, know it all. And I was like, make this make sense. This is what I heard yesterday that I was like, right, 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 right. If you're a lawyer to a high, pro now listen, if you're a public defender, you can just tell the little mama Luke that you, that you are defending. This is not going to look good. I'm only going to make $700 from this anyway. I'm not going to waste my time because this whole situation is looking raggedy. So go on, take a plea. Had Charlie had a public defender, the public defender might have been straight with him or a less highly paid look. Well, no, it wouldn't have to be a public defender. But Charlie is a client with deep, deep pockets. If Daniel Rashbaum came to him and was like, dude, I seen the evidence. This case looks terrible. That cuts off Daniel Rashbaum's money. Danny is like, okay, no, I'm out. The Meanwhile, if he's like, you know what? This seems like a winnable case. Turn on the money spigot. Oh, that money is flowing. It's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing. And everything is going good. It's flowing. Okay, cool. And so if he's like, you're looking good. The family is like, let's make sure we write this check and pay this bill. And in my opinion, Dan Rashbaum was like, I have a friend who was the top jury consultant. And for the low, low price of $500,000, he could come here and pick the jury from you. In the back of his mind, Rashi was like, we know we gonna lose, but we might as well lose in style. Let's just throw everything at the wall. So Daniel Rashbaum, in my opinion, made a business decision to blow up Charlie's head with like, you're doing great. You're doing fine. You're gonna get up. There's no way a lawyer with all this kind of experience looked at that information and was like, mm -hmm, I think we could win this. Not if he's a realist, he didn't. So he gave Charlie Adelson something he did not have before, and that was hope. Charlie says on the jail tapes, I was looking at the case. I was recognizing that it was in Tallahassee, and I was like, I don't know if this is going to go that good. But it's his lawyers who were like, no, 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 dude, we can fight this. And for the last year and a half, the money spigot has been turned on. And oh, it has been raining. The Adelsons were making it rain over there at the Rashbaum agency. I bet you Daniel Rashbaum, if he was not already a partner, is now a partner. Bet you he got a new pool. Bet you he paid off some of that student loan debt or the braces for the kids or whatever other kind of debt he had because the money has been coming in. And now every time he visits Charlie, every time time he talks to Charlie, you think he's not charging him a couple thousand dollars an hour? I guarantee you he is. Big fat payment for going to trial? Mm-hmm. All those hours he spent up there in Tallahassee and travel expenses and gas and everything else? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, win or lose, this check is going to clear. So Daniel Rashbaum, uh, 
basically grifted the grifters. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. Because it's Charlie Adelson, not that bad. And because he's still taking Ruth Adelson's phone call, or I mean, uh, Donna Adelson's phone calls and Charlie's phone calls, those calls are not free. He's like, yes, I'm going to talk to you about this and that. Let me just add this to my hours. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. He's billing like crazy. And so he's still working a hustle. And it's a hustle that I cannot really blame him for because that is what happens with a hustle. You do what you got to do to make the money you need to make. And then you go on with the rest of your life in news of other scumbags. Child, we need to talk Shirley Strawberry. Now, look, Miss Shirley Strawberry, I'm writing down my time codes, 1019. Shirley Strawberry is in a bad situation. To recap briefly, Shirley Strawberry, the co-host of the Steve Harvey Morning Show on the radio, married a bum. Now, she thought she was getting herself this Southern gentleman, and oh, he's so lovely, and oh, he's so delightful, and everything is going to go good for us. Meanwhile, he's a grifter, and so the phone calls from Shirley's husband, Will Ernest Williams, a.k.a. Ernesto, have been out here on a... On a um, YouTube channel called Phone Calls from Prison. Chat with that. Actually, Phone Calls from Jail. That notwithstanding, Phone Calls from Prison has the heat. Oh my God, they have the best phone calls in all of true crime. Hang on. Those Charlie phone calls are good. But um, Phone Calls from Prison, that lady, I don't even know if we know her name. She over there doing the Lord's work. It might be the devil's work, but she's doing some more work. Girlfriend is putting in work and I am here for it. In la yesterday she said, or two days ago, she said, Oh, I heard of some phone calls that y'all are all gonna want to hear, and I'm gonna drop them tomorrow. And I was like, Whoa, child, what are they? I need to let me set an alarm. Do I need to call in sick to work? <laughs> I'm gonna be a little sick. I got a little, I got a little amphibian living in my throat. Uh, uh child, I was perched. I was ready. But I was very busy yesterday at work. And so by the grace of Tina Turner and Beyonce, um, she dropped the calls at 7 p.m. So I didn't even have to take no time off. Off work. I was done with my commute. I was sitting here. I was like, okay, I have a nice steamy hot cup of herbal tea girl spill. And so I listened to the phone calls. Honey, the batch of phone calls that were dropped last night on phone calls from prison between Ernest Williams and his wife, Shirley Strawberry, and then between Ernest Williams and his side piece, which some people are calling her coleslaw. The side, the side chick's name is Sonia. Uh, Sonia Waller Durham, Sonia Durham Waller, Sonia. Some folks out here in the blogosphere are calling her coleslaw because coleslaw is a side dish. That I had never heard before, but I kind of love it. I guess any side piece could be a side chicken. She could be some baked beans. She could be corn on the cob. She could be whatever she want to be, but she not a main. She's a dish. Miss Shirley, oh, she is slab of ribs. But that Sonia, she's merely coleslaw. Anyway, so first, Ernest is on the phone with his wife, right? wife is at a restaurant. Shirley, she's like, hello. And he's like, oh, hey, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. She's like, I'm fine. But you hear all this noise in the background. And he's like, where are you? What are you doing? Are you at a party? She's like, no, I'm at a restaurant. She's like, it's loud in here. And he's like, oh, well, go outside. She was like, it's cold. What? <laughs> Say the love is gone without saying the love is gone. If your beloved calls you, yes, from prison, but you know, it's a limited time for you to talk. And he was like, well, go in the bathroom. And she's like, it stinks in there. Listen, can I talk to you later? Because I'm in a restaurant. She's sick of him. She's sick of him. She's sick of all of his mess. She's sick of the public humiliation. She's sick of him. And that hurt his feelings. So immediately after he hangs up with slabber ribs, he picks up the other line and calls Miss Coleslaw. And I was like, oh, what's he going to say to Coleslaw? Child, the gibberish this man was talking. Now, look, I am not from the South. So sometimes Southern sayings and things confuse me. But between all of his slick, gibberish, whatever talking, one of the other YouTubers, I think is Grown Woman Vibes, calls it mush mouth. She's like, child, I don't speak mush mouth, but this is what I think he said. This, was he drunk? Did he not have his teeth there? He's like, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. He sound like an old pimp. You know, listen, I am not from the South, but I have been to the South. So I got relatives that live in the deep, deep backwoods. I'm talking no indoor plumbing. Shout out to those who enjoy no indoor plumbing. I'm not about that outhouse life, child. I need to be right here in my house in warmth with some poopery and some charm and, and a bidet. But this is a dude who's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and he starts talking all this mess and he's telling some story, child. I don't know what language he's speaking. I'm not bilingual in that particular way. I don't know what 
this man is talking about. But at the bottom line, I know my worth. I know my, yeah, yeah, you got to know your worth. You got to know your worth. Okay, sir. What are you worth sitting up there in prison with your life's, your, your wife's life in ruins? She is just a rubble. She's She got nothing left behind you. You have financially taken off her money. You've taken her reputation. Well, maybe she gave it away because she was associating herself with a bum like you. I don't know. Am I victim blaming? Does she have poor judgment? This is a 70-year-old woman who is on the verge of losing her job and has lost financially everything. She has no house. She has no place to stay. She has no car to drive. And he's talking about, you can't worry about money because money is just a material thing. Hmm? I'm, I'm sorry, what now? Um, you know what? Uh, it's also material things, housing, food, whatever. He's like, you know, I, I, I was raised to never worry about money. Clearly you worried about her money because he was pressuring her. Did you pay the lawyer? Did you pay the lawyer? I, I'm ready to get out of here. Did you pay the lawyer? Sir, uh, is freedom a material thing? I'm not even entirely sure. Hang on. So he got his feelings hurt talking to the main dish. So he's over here with coleslaw, crap talking his wife. Your, your dearly beloved, the one that you promised to love, honor, and not grift for the rest of your life. That's who you talking shade about on this phone? For all of us to hear in these YouTube streets, sir, mm -mm. I'm going to need you to have all the seats in the world. You're going to need a whole stadium full of seats because that's a mess. And here comes Coleslaw, and she's just like, yeah, yeah. She might have well been saying, yeah, daddy, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, daddy. What in the pimps up, hose down was I listening to? I was like, this is some madness. Meanwhile, the calls go back and forth. A call with main dish, a call with side dish, a call with main dish, a call with side dish. And I was like, okay. So then he's back on the phone with his wife. He's like, yeah, baby, how you doing? Happy Valentine's Day. I would send you a thousand flowers. I love you so much. You so wonderful. Isn't this all gravy? And she's like, yeah, well, I finally moved into my own apartment. Now, before when she was, she's literally homeless. This man left her homeless and without a car, right? So she got her, she's like, I'm not used to regular cars. I don't know how these little putt putts work. Um, I need a Range Rover. I need a big this, a big that. Heaven, you walking right now. All you got is them two black Cadillacs on your feet, foot one and foot two. That's your car right now. So I, I suggest that you get yourself a Kia or a Yugo or whatever kind of little car they make out here that's not that expensive. I would let you borrow my kid's car, but I'm driving it. So she's like, I have this little car and um, I guess I'm going to give it to my daughter when I finally get a real car. Ma'am, you, you, you ain't have no car at all. Okay. Behind dealing with this dude because you were driving a Bentley and all of this. All of that got repossessed messing with this dude okay cool hang on so she's like before she was like and i needed at least a three-bedroom apartment with two bathrooms because everyone has to have their own bathroom then she went apartment hunting and she don't have the credit so she was told oh um you're gonna have to get a co-signer a 70 year old woman who was in such financial ruin that she needs a co-signer just to get an apartment now listen if a regular person runs into whatever kind of financial difficulty i hope things get better for you because that is a terrible situation to be in but this lady has a public facing face she's all on the radio or whatever hmm no wonder Stephen m trying to fire her behind it you ain't heard it from me but quiet as it's kept Steve Harvey and them are supposed to be waiting for all of this to little die down a little bit. And they're going to be like, bye, Shirley. Bye, girl. It's time for you to retire. She's about to turn 70 anyway. 70 years old and nearly homeless and not in a good relationship with her daughter. She's paying her daughter's rent. Okay, so your child can't even help you. If you're 70 and you fall on hard times, usually you move into your kid's guest bedroom or the basement or whatever. Mm -mm. She's supporting her daughter. Who's supporting her? What? A lot of people are draining her. That no good husband of hers is draining her. And so she's like, yeah, I'm here in my new apartment. It's a one bedroom apartment. I don't have any furniture. I'm. She says, so um, her husband was like, so what are you sleeping on? She's like an air mattress in the middle of the floor. What? Listen, I'm only 53. M me and my back, we can't do an air mattress. Mm -mm. 
Mm -mm. I would rather do a pallet of just like blankets and random couch cushions than sleep on an air mattress. All that soft and squishy and making noise when you roll over. And I have a good air mattress. The guest child, I do not sleep on an air mattress. But I have an air mattress that's queen size and it raises up to the height of a regular bed. And it has like this special cover over it so you don't get sweaty from the plastic. And it does all these things. And while you're laying on it, you can make it more firm or you can make it more soft. Still, I wouldn't sleep on it. I slept on it for one night when we first moved into this house 20 years ago, waiting for the delivery people to deliver our furniture. Miss Shirley is like, oh, I don't have any furniture. So I'll just be on this air mattress until whenever. She has a desk and a chair, so she has a place to work from and nothing else. 70 years up. It is tragic. It is ridiculous. It is un believable and you know what her dearly uh beloved spouse did laugh you laughing at me my whole situation is in shambles and you having a little kiki about it oh so no you are not no you are not there would be an unfortunate unaliving. I'm just saying, I'm not, we hear a gossip rumor in your window we do not advocate unaliving but um I would have him on site mm-mm Mm -mm. It would be a very unfortunate accident. Oh, he has some uh, a, a random insulin injection, even though he's not diabetic. What was that other dude using? Uh, he would. I would be sweetening his tea with ever with um antifreeze. He'd be like, "This tea is sweet. Mm. It's awful sweet." And I'd be like, mm, "Baby, you need another glass. Let me put that in some Gatorade for you. I'm gonna put it in every drink, every meal you have." Mm -mm. No, sir. It's bad enough you got me in this messed up situation and you are laughing at me with coleslaw? You over there having a kiki at my expense with your side chick and now it's out here on Beyonce's internet for everybody to see and enjoy and understand. Nope, 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 nope. That's not gonna go down like that. Again, we hear a gossip rumor in your window. Do not advocate the unaliving of people unless you absolutely have to. I'm just... I'm just saying. And last but certainly not least, once Ernest realizes that his wife is done with him, he starts talking to Coleslaw over there. And he's just like, so, um, you know, wh where is this relationship going? Or what do you want from me? Or whatever, whatever. And so she's like, you know, I think I want you to be my man. And he's like, what? Say it again. They ended up having this back and forth in which Ernest, the dude who's in prison, has the side chick begging him to be her boyfriend. What? I'm sorry. I'm so, what? How do you get? That's like not even low self-esteem. That's a serious self-esteem self-esteem deficit. While you are begging a prisoner to be your boyfriend, what? Well, all these free dudes just running around who can take you to dinner with this dude. You have to pay six dollars a phone call to talk to him. What? The whole thing made my head explode. I was not ready. I just, I was not ready. I was absolutely not ready. But look, oh goodness, this, this video was running long. There's one thing that I totally forgot to mention about the Adelsons that I have to throw in here before I run because this, this video is going to take 500 years to upload. And that is that yesterday I was listening to the Lawyer You Know's podcast, right? And so um, he was playing through the jail phone call that got uh, Donna Adelson arrested, the one where the call cuts off, and but she keeps talking, and it's on a recorded line, and she talks about, we're going to flee to Vietnam, and we're going to, you know, do like, we're going to have an unalived pack, me and my husband, and we have all the cemetery plots, and blah, blah, blah. And the call continues to play on, and then yesterday on The Lawyer You Know, they played a portion of this call that I had not heard before. And that is that Donna apparently was talking on her cell phone, but she had some sort of like cordless headpiece, whatever, and probably a Bluetooth, you know, like a little ear thing. And so she's walking around talking with this thing still in her ear. And she talks for 25 minutes about her plans that accidentally got recorded. And then somebody in the house walks by and says, hey, what is this? It's a telephone that never hung up. That at that point they realized, oh, shoot. We never disconnected the call. And then you hear the call go dead. I was like, oh. And in my mind, it was like, fade to black. That's what happens in the movie when, where this is portrayed because you know this is going to be in a movie. Child, I can hardly wait. But I was like, oh, that's how that happened. She left her cell phone laying someplace and she was just walking around the house talking and doing whatever. And one of her friends was like, wait, what is this? Oh, you accidentally recorded yourself, dumb heifer. What? 
I really personally truly appreciate a dumb criminal because without dumb criminals, what would we have? Not a lot. We'd have a lot more people getting away with crime, but these, these mama Lukes, child, they're not getting away with anything. I need to get my behind away to a shower and I need to get to the post office. There are many, many things to do this morning. Listen, you go out there and have yourself a fantastic day. And um, if I gave you a number yesterday in the chicken run, look out in the mail for your gossip mail. Go over to my community tab and you'll see what the packages look like because I'm going to post a picture of my pile of uh, gossip rumor and innuendo chickens that are just about to go in the mail. And if you didn't get a chicken, don't you worry your pretty little head. There are more little lovies coming soon. You make it a great day. Bye.